Welcome to episode 6. This is me, the tight Yorkshireman here on the poor man's electric boat that we've now named Nuts and Volts. This is going to be quite a short and quite a sweet video. Quite an important, crucial stage of it, of this whole project. So let's have a look. So we'll just have a little recap on where we are, where we've got to and, uh, and hopefully we'll see this motor spinning in a minute or two. But first off, if we just run through obviously where we are got the batteries, four batteries, 12 volt each battery, running series, so it's giving us the 48 volts. The 48 volts come down to these two contactors here, obviously we've got the positive and the negative. In effect the contactors are switches that when turned on allow the 48 volts to travel through from that side through to this side. To follow these cables which go all the way around and up towards the control system. So as the power then comes round, obviously it feeds round from these cables, comes through a couple of fuses, nice heavy duty fuses, last thing we want is the boat blowing up. It then feeds round into the magic control box. Now this control box is what came off a forklift truck. Uh, we have had it obviously sort of rewired up, so there's various different switches and things on there to when it was in the forklift truck. But the, the control system, in essence, is how it was as it came out of there. It does have with it a diagnostic port. So if there's ever any issues, we can plug that in and that shows us what's wrong with it. Which brings us to the point that we had, whereby it was a couple of weeks ago now. We had basically got the system wired up, but whenever we came to press the throttle and go, there was no power. And it turned out, first off, this contactor here... We've got a 12 volt contactor in and it actually needed to be a 48 volt contactor because obviously this section is now all running 48 volts as opposed to 12 volts. Then when we swapped that contactor, we tried again and it still didn't work. And that turned out it was a wire missing from the relay that triggered the contactor. So we've now cured all them and with a little bit of luck, and a bit of good management we've got a system here that shows you how we go about starting the thing very sophisticated instructions as you'll see all written down what that does is first off we have to press the red switch the red switch and as you can possibly pick up there that flip the contactors that are at the batteries to now feed the 48 volt through Number two on the, uh, the instructions is the, the hand switch, which is this one here. So when we flick that on, that then brings power through to the system. And as it shows there, we've currently got 53.3 volts, which obviously for a 48 volt system is, uh, is pretty much all right. So once we've got power to that, we then look back to the instructions. And that follows these two switches. So first off... We put that switch to position number two and that switch to position number one. And as you can hear there, that clicks the contactor, which is now spinning that motor. And if I just grab the throttle, we give it some revs. So there we have a spinning motor. Yay! Now we've actually seen the motor spinning itself, we'll uh, just fire it up again and we'll knock it into gear and you can see the, uh, the section with the uh, actual prop spinning. So let's follow the sequence. That's on. That's on. That. And that are on. So there we have the spinning motor. Obviously we've got the gear linkage there. So knock it into gear. We can see the coupling. The tight Yorkshire man had to buy. It's actually spinning there. So again, if we put a few revs on. So we can 
see there, that's turning the, uh, the propeller and kicking some water out the back. So, we have now got a few other jobs to do on it. Over this sort of week or so, we'll get them done. Right, so as you've seen there, we've made that massive step forward now. We've actually got that motor spinning. And that motor was turning that prop in the water, as you could see, it was pushing the, uh, the water out the back end there. So I think if you remember back to vlog number one, kind of said in that, well, we've, you know, we've got the gearbox, we've got the control system, we've got the motor, we've obviously got the prop in there. How hard could it be to get it all to work? Well, it's been pretty tricky, especially this last week or two. We've had a, a few electric gremlins that have uh, have been biting us to, to delay the actual spinning that prop. But it's a fantastic moment we've got there. We've got it turning. We're now a little bit away from actually getting the boat moving. We've got cooling fans to fit. We've got sort of chargers out getting them wired in. A um, few other bits and bobs like that. We've got to sort the wiring out, tidy it all up, get the switches and things into place, get the throttle into the right sort of place. But I'm sure you'll agree, this is a massive moment, a massive step forward in the project. We have got that prop turning in the water, using the electric drive system that the poor man, the tight Yorkshireman, has managed to come up with. I say I've managed to come up with, I think everyone can see there's been a lot of help from other people. Simon in particular, he's done a fantastic job working out all this electric system. Uh, the help I had from Dave sorting all the coupling and things like that out was immense as well. A few other people along the way. Brilliant effort so far. So, hopefully it's not going to be too long now because we're coming back to you with another vlog that shows this boat moving out that way. But in between times, from the tight Yorkshireman on the poor man's electric boat. I'm going to carry on winging it and we'll see you all soon. I found myself drifting along through the burning sun and the pouring rain. I have to try some slide. Ba 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 